Well, hello, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for submitting your questions on Twitter. Shall be an interesting wrestling Q&A. Shall be. Let's go ahead and get started with Wrestling Rants asking, who would be the perfect debut opponent for the Velveteen Dream? Especially if you're trying to get him over like a star. Now, as far as getting him over like a star, has WWE even care to bother to try and do that with anybody nowadays? Not really. That said, if I'm bringing up the Velveteen D Dream, I'm trying to emphasize that he's a character. I'm trying to emphasize that he's a performer. I'm trying to emphasize charisma. I'm trying to emphasize personality. So I want to put him up against somebody that has absolutely none of those traits or characteristics. And I'll go with Taxi Stan Sami Zayn. Like, what a perfect contrast. Generic fucking bland-ass wrestler and the Velveteen Dream. That's what I would do. ENC98. If WWE had made Undertaker face of the company, would it have worked? Well, to a degree, he kind of was the face of the company in the mid-90s for a period of time. And I wouldn't exactly say it worked all that incredibly well. Um, Taker, Taker's one of those dudes that his greatness, his goathood, if you will, is measured over longevity and sustained excellence of staying at and near the top. Not so much because of the overwhelming star power that he had or the overwhelming drawing period that he had, any white-hot periods of time. Like, in the grand scheme of things, Austin was incredibly white-hot for a three-ish year stretch, including plenty of time that he wasn't there due to injury. But in terms of overall impact and greatness to the company, The Undertaker's legacy is much more sweeping and therefore much more important and significant than Austin's. Unpopular opinion, yes. Totally valid opinion, absolutely. History Guy 7 asks, What would you rather see? Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold Steve Austin argue over who goes over in a match? Or... Watching Jada Fire and Vanessa Williams have black lesbian fuck sex. Like, what is wrong with us? Where have we come to? Like, you're really asking me this question. Really? Really? It's gotta be Hogan and Austin backstage politicking over who's fucking going over in the match! I've seen Jada Fire do chicks of all shapes, sizes, colors, and squirt varieties. Been there, done that. I'm good. Give me Hogan and Austin in the true battle of battles. Who's putting the over, the other over, brother? Fucking black lesbian sex. I've seen that plenty of times. Experienced it. Like I don't fucking I had three sons. Come on now. Hogan and Austin. Hogan and Austin. Austin and Hogan. Backstage politicking. Trying to figure out a finish for a match at, let's say, WrestleMania. What the fuck would you rather watch? Dick Loney is gay. I gotta be fired up. Fired up. The hell you think my answer is gonna be? Thoughts on what WWE has done with the 24-7 championship? Apparently, I, I guess it wasn't originally their idea. It was USA Networks, which makes a lot of sense because it was actually a really good idea. Uh... You get past some of the stupid crap they did with Mike and Maria. It's been a lot of fun. Our truth and Drake Maverick is easily the rivalry of the year in WWE. And you can take your Cole and Gargano and shove them up your ass. I don't care. NXT main roster. This is the feud of the year. It's one of the few things that provides me consistent entertainment value most every week when I watch Raw. It's been a lot of fun. And a perfect example of comedy has a place in wrestling. And because wrestling is so lame now and wrestling is so vanilla and the same. If anything, the comedy is as needed as much as it ever has been. Big Boss is the Fiend character proof that still the characters get over that more than matches. Yeah, oh yeah. When are people going to realize this? The more the business changes, the more it stays the fucking same. Characters and larger than life personalities matter way more than the flips and kicks and shit that you can do. Period. Jack Duncan, why did WWE give Lesnar the title just to have him lose it the next month? You, you got to sit there and assume at this point it was because they saw the Seth Rollins crap wasn't working and they thought this was a chance to reset and have Rollins beat Lesnar and kind of go forward with that. That's the only real logic you can come up with at this point. Otherwise, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Case 10, 
Who do you see taking the belt off Seth Rollins? I don't know, and I don't care. Just somebody better than him, please, is all I ask. And he also asks, why are people so obsessed with Dolph Ziggler? He's had 10 plus years and he still can't fucking get over. A fucking man, hallelujah! I don't hear any excuses about it. WWE damn it, WWE did this, WWE did that. You know, part of the reason this advertising by WWE works it was when a guy just isn't that good. And that lame ass just isn't that good. What is so different about him? What is so unique about him? What is so special about him? Ah! And that is, most importantly of all, why every time I talk about him, I bring my hands together three times and I do... Fucked off Ziggler because he's earned it. Fuck him. He's lazy. He's complacent. Put your energies and efforts behind somebody else that actually deserves it and wants it. Give me a break. One Alex Sutcliffe. Do you think EC3 could be a main event star in WWE? Do I think he could even bother getting on television at this point? Not really. Apparently not. So hell no, I don't. Shane too, but it is what it is. Shazzy Ali. Has Charlotte been cloned? She sure isn't the same bitch she was in NXT and on the main roster a couple years ago. Uh, that, that is called uh, fake fun bags being surgically redone and apparently butt lifts. And that, that's a lot of plastic. You know, but people like her. How many people really like her, though? The same. Cyanide Rain. What if The Fiend were to unmask and he was revealed to be Dino Bravo? Now this... This would be box office. Why? Because Dino Bravo is bang bang 18 bullets in his body jet. And if he was to come back, and like you said, Cyanide Rain, you had Bray Wyatt from the Firefly Funhouse appear on the Titan Tron, and he says, ah, let me in, let me in. And then you had the big reveal, the mask comes off, and it's Dino Bravo saying, oh, 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 oh. who wants a cigarette? Who wants a cigarette? The duck of the bullets. Fuck. I have 50 million people can instantly turn over to the USA Network to watch this. Now it is an indictment on our society as a whole. Especially because it's the most important key component of all of this. Is that, bang bang, Dino Bravo is 18 bullets dead. Dead, I said. Joshua Bryan, any modern, flippy, kicky wrestlers that you actually like? Ah, I could see guys that I would actually be able to be fans of because I do like different varieties and different styles of wrestlers. But there are so many flippy, kicky guys that none of them really break out or stand out for me. So I just kind of take a pass at most of them. You can make an argument that Rey Mysterio, being a luchador, has a lot of those flippy, kicky elements to it. But he does other things that can actually be bothered to tell a fucking story in his matches. So I'll, I'll gravitate to somebody like him. But in terms of the modern ones, especially guys that are relatively fresh in the business, not really. Not saying I couldn't. I'm just saying I don't because it's a product of wrestling now. Because they're all the fucking same. So what the hell's the difference? You like them one, you like them all. Stephen Hilton. What match or main event have you rewatched the most? Match I have probably rewatched the most over the years is most likely Hogan and Andre at WrestleMania 3. The moment I have rewatched the most. <laughs> you already knew this was coming. <laughs> he psycho sin got up on the second row because Johnny Ace told him he had to expand his offensive repertoire. So he tries to land the big softball boot of justice for the second row to fucking Scott Steiner. <laughs> ah, ah, his legs going in this way. It's a going in that way. It's a going in this way and in that way. And then the greatest thing of all is they still finish the fucking match. Who's the dude in the mask? It's fucking Road Warrior Animal. He's Scott Steiner random fucking times, bumping into his fucking sins, broken, shattered, disfigured leg multiple times. It's just fucking epic. It's just awesome. <laughs> and he said, Babu, da 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 da. <laughs> And almost 20 years later, it kills me every fucking time. Every time. It's legendary. It's classic. 
And knowing how buttered everybody involved with wrestling gets nowadays, where this shit used to be a fun gimmick where I laughed about it and enjoyed it, and yet at the same point in time, still defended Psycho Sick in the fucking mood. Now I wonder if this gimmick would even fucking get over. Because everybody's like, oh, that's gross. I can't believe you would like that. Oh, my God, that is so mean and savage. How could you not support somebody who puts your body like, ah, oh, shut the hell up. Nick Willis, PNW. I'm fired up today. Why is WWE's viewership at all-time lows, despite its mainstream exposure arguably being at an all-time high? Just because you get more mainstream exposure than ever, if you're still putting out turds, the people don't really care to stick their head in the toilet bowl. I mean, you're putting, like, Seth Rollins out there. Like, who the fuck is going to turn in to fucking ESPN, let's say, see Seth Rollins and be like, my God, I ain't watched WWE in fucking 15 years, but he's the dude that's going to make it happen. Ah, give me a break. It's the lack of characters, personalities, the lack of stars. That's why. WNC Podcast. Al Snow has said in the past that Vince McMahon wants everyone to be over so he can make a lot of money. How right or wrong is he? Also, if Vince is supposedly a fan of the big jacked up guys for his top stars, why is he pushing so many people at the top who don't fit that mold? To the second question, it's because he probably thinks like he can push them enough, gets enough of a return out of them to justify it. They're safe because they're not coming going anywhere. It's not like Hollywood's coming for him. TV's not coming for him. The movies aren't coming for him. You know what I'm saying? As far as the first one, Al Snow saying it in the past, and maybe in a period of time, 15, 20 years ago, that might have made some sense. If he said that to me now, like in front of me, I would clown his ass and tell him how fucking stupid and idiotic this is. He doesn't want anybody to get over. Not above the brand, not above the shield. He doesn't. He values the WWE being over more than any individual star. Like in the past, what Al Snow said, to be fair, made a lot of sense because you could see that back at the time. Now, there's no way you could fucking possibly say that with a straight face and actually mean it. And if you ever hear anybody in wrestling, I don't care who it is, say this crap to you, they deserve to be clowned because they sound like a jackass. Frederick Lowhouse, when will we see John Cena win his 17th world title? I don't know if we ever will. I don't know if he cares enough for it to ever happen. But never say never. But I don't know that it's coming anytime soon. Lucas asks, who is the biggest dick in wrestling history? Well, apparently to the question that has been asked on the internet for over a decade and now, the answer to the question of who has the biggest dick in wrestling history clearly has to be Batista. But this, this is an easy answer. It's Vince McMahon. Like, it's not even close. Like, you could bottle up all the dicks throughout wrestling history over the years, and there are many, many of them. Put their combined penile efforts into one steady stream, and they don't even measure up to a fraction of the dickhood of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Piznik 64, whose push is was worse? Rollins, Cena's, or Rollins? Rollins' force is horrible. Rollins' push bordering on force, pretty bad. Only one of them lasted for a fucking decade and helped create the crappy environment that we see today. It was John Cena's. His was by far the worst. And what makes it bad now is we're at an age and point in time where a lot of people that are now on here talking about this crap and talking on social media about it grew up on Cena's so they normalize this shit and they think it's okay and they think it was cool. Platon underscore Kenny closes this out. How do you think AEW will look in 2021? Like a distant memory? <laughs> I don't know. I have significant concerns about the level of markdom of some of the VPs and that they're going to push themselves. And getting out there and having to sustain weekly television is vastly different. It's not saying they can't make it. I'm not saying they won't make it, but I have my concerns. I have my concerns. Thank you, everybody, for submitting your questions. Remember... I am an angry wrestling man, and this is OTRS Central, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.